Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you enjoyed the intro. Let's start with the unboxing of the TB30 Epsilon Biazor Poly. Available on their website before you've even downloaded it is a full color manual that involves a background information on all the avionics included, as well as the checklists, but not how to fly it. You can also download a paint kit and the PMS50 and TDS Garmin units are compatible if you download the mod from their website. I also managed to find a crew operating manual freely available, nothing to do with the product here, but you can use that for background systems information and how to fly bits and pieces with the aircraft. You also get 11 liveries, but these are actually six liveries, including uh, the Apache livery numbered one through six. So six unique, 11 total. As we have a look around the outside of the aircraft, uh, marketing information from the website, you get accurate flight dynamics. They've had access to the real aircraft and TB30 pilots. It's fully operational front and rear stations. It's got the integration for PMS 50 and TDS custom EFB, uh, hydraulic systems and electrical systems all fully functional, including circuit breakers and a functional smoke system. You can see the PBA, uh, PBR 4K textures are pretty decent. If you want to count the rivets, you can do uh, They're here. So I'll run through a simple startup in the background. It's a very simple aircraft, a bit of information about it. So it's a single engine piston propeller with a constant speed propeller. Uh, it's got retractable tricycle undercarriage, so easy handling on the ground, good visibility. It's a tandem seat. It's a training aircraft designed in the 1980s, produced by Sakata for the French Air Force as a leading aircraft to the Alpha Jet. It took on some of the roles of the Fuga Magister, and there's an aircraft that Azur Poly did model, and I'll put a link to my review of that in the description and above. So there's a start, there's a little finesse required between the starter sound and the engine working sound, but overall it's nice. There's a little bit of a bug with the cockpit canopy in the fact that when I close it now, it gets louder. What is that about? You're supposed to shut the cockpit uh, or shut the canopy prior to start. So that might be a reason why it's gone a bit backwards, but I've used the EFB here to shut both canopies and it seems to work. On the subject of EFB, you can set the states, the smokes and failures, close the canopies, and there's a really nice map that you can navigate by. After you've started the engine, don't forget to switch the alternator on, make sure all the caution warning lights are out, and switch on the gyro and avionics master switches to make sure everything in the cockpit is working. Then it's just a case of switching the lights on as you prefer and taxiing on out to the runway. Ground handling of this aircraft is very simple with the nose wheel steering, tricycle undercarriage, but you can't turn on a dime, so don't think that you can turn yourself out of trouble. Plan ahead and make sure you give yourself enough room to maneuver. That flap sound effect sounds awful, sounds like a strangled cat, but if it's authentic, then fair enough. But in general, the sounds are fairly decent. Whilst we're sat here, let's have a look at the night lighting. Uh, so that's my torch light on, you've got UV light, so it gives you the kind of violet effect. There's no backlighting of the instruments. Uh, you can substitute the UV light with the red light, so turn in that down, you've then got red. And you can match that red with the rest of the console as I'll demonstrate in a second. You've also got the radio lights which just dims the buttons on the radios and here's the console lighting. All fully dim dimmable, easy for me to say. Uh, final light is the uh, map light front left. Uh, not that you'll be holding your piece of paper underneath it but it's there if you want it. Here we are on the runway. Uh, we want to count to 10 seconds to 60 knots so I've got a timer for that. At 70 knots, I'll be rotating at 110 knots. That's when we'll be climbing away. Takeoff roll is fairly simple. I don't have any wind enabled. There's 10 seconds, about 60 knots. So that makes sense. In about 15 seconds, you'll be airborne. I'm putting the top of the glare shield on the horizon where it would be in order to accelerate. And that's a good visual reference for climbing away. Gear flaps up and I'll accelerate up to 110 for the climb and we'll cruise out and do some low level very shortly. So this aircraft was designed developed in the nine, early 1980s by Sakata. Uh, it was designed to replace some of the Fuga Magisters as a lead in to the Alpha Jet jet trainer. In 1984 that's when the French Air Force started training their pilots on it and you can see of course that tandem seating arrangement gets them used to a uh, fast jet. It is only a piston prop they did produce one prototype with a turboprop in it. It's called the TB31, a mega 
So Azure Poly, if you're watching, please produce that because that would be awesome. A bit more power is always good. But on the subject of power, you can fly at 180 knots quite simply at low level and that works out to be three miles a minute. So very simple math for cruising at low level and it's very comfortable. The visibility at the cockpit is fantastic. So it's definitely a step up from any uh, other general aviation you've been flying uh, with plenty of performance to go with it. Interestingly, this aircraft, the TB30, does not have ejection seats fitted. So if you had an engine failure at low level, really important to know where you can land it. And I will be doing some engine off stuff later just for interest. So what we're going to do next is uh, get towards the port. I'll have a look at the map shortly and then climb up for some aerobatics and some rear cockpit work and just show you what the view is like, which is pretty special. So EFB is the button on the right hand side. And then there's the map. Very nice. So what do you think so far from what you've seen? Is this something you're considering purchasing? Or have you already got it? Either way, throw your thoughts in the comments below and let me know. What we'll do here is position for some rear cockpit work and then some aerobatics. If you're still with me, please consider chucking a like in if it's useful or enjoyable. Even better, subscribe, help support the channel. Here we are in the rear cockpit, just shutting the alternator guard switch. You'll notice it's very stripped out. There's not even an EFB in the back cockpit, which is kind of unusual because you'd like to have that information available. There's also no pilot in the front seat, which is highly illegal in this sort of aircraft because everything like the radio switches and the primary switches are in the front seat. So maybe an oversight, but something they can easily fix. But overall, the view in the back is excellent, especially being behind the wing with a better view down below. So we've got a bit of a line feature down to the left. We're going to throw some aerobatics in here, starting with the loop and then into the barrel roll. About 180 to 200 knots is what you need. The airframe is rated to about five and a half G and the G meters on the top left of the uh, cockpit. I've switched the smoke on. The smoke effect is decent, but it trails off very, not quickly, but you'll see what I mean in a second. There's a loop into a barrel roll. I've got to remind myself, because I've got experience in turboprop aircraft of a similar nature, tandem seat, uh, shorts to carne for those that know it, and it has a lot more power than this does. Now into a stall turn, really tricky. So pull into the vertical, kick left rudder, and then you've got to wait whilst it hangs. And quite often it'll just flop out of this, which is realistic. It could use some finesse in terms of the aerodynamics, but not a bad effort at all. And it is possible to get that right, and I'll demonstrate one of those in a minute. Now here you can see that smoke trail kind of just disappearing like a game of Snake on a Nokia 3310. Uh, so we're upside down here. Reference for upside down is the top of the standby compass on the canopy boat on the horizon. I mean, what simpler reference do you have for upside down? So really easy. It's got a two and a half litre inverted flight tank, so it has got um, some short duration inverted capability but I haven't been able to get it to flame out maybe it doesn't maybe I haven't just waited long enough here's the uh, stall turn or hammerhead I recommend if you're doing these to as soon as you pitch into the vertical don't wait for it to slow down just put that rudder in to try and get the uh, yaw started but there you go it is possible smoke goes off and just for fun, here's some aerobatics from the outside to so barrel roll first. And if you're one of those guys that likes flying outside, this is a nice aircraft for it because it looks nice and it's simple to fly. Now we're going for some spinning. Now the crew manual I found suggested about 75 knots for the entry. Pro spin control is full aft stick and full left rudder. But you can see here, it just kind of wallows and actually goes to the right. So recommendation for you is actually try it at 100 knots. You get more rudder authority and then it'll spin nicely as I'm about to demonstrate. So nice and sipient stage and then to the fully developed spin. For the recovery, you want to go rudder opposite, centralize the stick and when the roll stops, power on and ease from the dive. Next, we're going to do some stalling. So the stall speed for this aircraft is 60 knots with full flap or 72 knots with no flap. Now 
it's a still warner and it's pretty much a switch that it just dips a wing every time. So if you're doing aerobatics or you're close to the stall and you hear that still warner, stop pulling or ease off because it will tuck a wing, which is a little disappointing that it's so much of a switch, but at least it's predictable. So here we are cruising back to where we left. Views outside are pretty special and the view behind, I mean, look at that. You can hide the co-pilot, I'll have him back, so that's available. But the views, as you're so low, brilliant. You can see all around. I put in some custom custom cameras, so this is one from the uh, top of the vertical stabilizer. I'm just about in range to switch my engine off, and I'm just going to pull the mixture, pull the RPM. The engine takes a while to shut down, which is kind of strange, and the prop keeps spinning, which may be realistic because I couldn't find any pictures of a fully feathered TB30, so it might be that it does have some residual spin to it. But we've got a decent long straight in approach. We're holding consistent energy states. So I'm going to lower the gear and lower one stage of flap. And I'll make sure my speed is stable as I'm pointing towards my aim point. Uh, and it's looking good. So I drop another stage of flaps, and there's only two stages of flaps with this aircraft. But now that I've done that, because I want to go into the uh, visual circuit, I'm going to restart the engine. And all I did there was put the RPM at lever fully forwards and the mixture fully forwards. Approach speed for this aircraft is uh, 90 knots, but like I said, the stall speed's 60, so with proficiency, you'll probably want to lower your speed to about 70 knots for the, uh, for the flare and touchdown. Okay, there's not an airfield to do circuits at because of the mountains, but here we are. Uh, tip for the spacing is to put the runway kind of inside the roundel on the wing as your downwind. So in the final turn, I'm a bit slow, should be aiming for about 100 knots in the final turn, but 110 knots downwind, 100 knots in the final turn, and like I said, 80 to 90 knots uh, as your short final speed. Now the crew manual suggests you can aero brake this for what it's worth, so once you touch down, and you can aero brake all the way down to 60 knots, and then below 50, you can start braking normally. But I'm fast, and I'm going to land very long. So it's a nice aircraft to get used to, to get used to its foibles, how it flies, where it stalls. So it's great to have an aircraft with plenty of character that you can get used to. So my overall thoughts on this aircraft, uh, we've gone through the goods, we've gone through some of the bugs. Now they are producing or they are developing this more, so they'll fix stuff that they find, so that I'm looking forward to that. But on the positive, we've now got an aircraft that flies comfortably at 180 knots. It's fully IFR capable, it's got great views, it's got lots of nuances that you can uh, work to and train to, to get the most out of this aeroplane. Sure, the flap noise isn't the best noise in the world, but I think the Zoopoly have done really well with this aircraft to make it look good, it sounds decent, and it's certainly a great start. So for me, I recommend it. I'll be flying it again, especially low level. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Please chuck in a like, like I say, comment to see what you think about this aircraft. Uh, and I hope you join me for the next video.